everybody. Welcome to the Great Lives Podcast. I'm Nick. And I'm Tammy. And we're coming to you live from the Appalachian Mountains right here in the home of Eastern Kentucky. And uh, we're excited about what uh, God's going to do tonight on the episode. Uh, we want to give a quick shout out to Morgan Big. She's the first one in here. Howdy, Morgan. <laughs> the Victorian for sure. The first one in her class. <laughs> In the class of three at last. And we have uh, Sister Mary already in. Hi, Sister Mary. And, um, yeah, before we get into our topic, we want to quickly uh, mention our sponsors, which one is MKM Soap. It's uh, located on uh, 4500 uh, Open Fork, Open Fork Road <laughs> in Moorhead, Kentucky. They have awesome products and uh, I believe we have to make a trip there this Saturday morning because we're hurting near out. <laughs> we're running low on soap, and you definitely want us to get soap. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're trying to cross that off of our uh, Christmas. Uh, you know, uh, we're letting everybody know that we're up on soap, so you don't have to give us that for Christmas. <laughs> Unless you give us any KM soap, then we'll like, greatly accept. <laughs> Yeah, uh, we also want to mention too, like if you want to uh, help this ministry, you can through uh, PayPal uh, at Free at Last Podcast. Also on the uh, on the Podbean uh, platform, you you can become a patron there. Um, we decided to um, just have instead of doing a uh, Patreon page, uh, we just decided to go with the. Uh, the Podbean patron app there because it's just going to be easier to um, just going to be easier to keep all of our our records in one place, <laughs> make it easier come tax time. Yes. And um, <laughs> yeah, so our topic tonight um, it's one of those not so easy topics to talk about, and then again, it's one of those topics that that if you're just experiencing these one at a time, chances are that um, it might just be coincidence and not actual abuse going on. But chances are, like, if you see three, four, five of these signs, then, you know, it might be a red flag. Um, I've had people ask me before, like, on different situations, they would say, well, didn't you see the red flags? And my response would be, I thought it was a carnival. <laughs> I thought there was a circus going on. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, too, we also want to say, like, if, you know, with these signs, like, this is another reason why you need to be plugged into a good biblical church. Because if, if you're going through these signs and you see that a lot of them uh, ring true, then you need a good support group. Um, and it's... It's harder to find a better support group than a good, healthy church. And I'm not favoring any denomination or anything like that, but there's just some things that, that you need family to go to, to counsel you with and, and help lead you through and out of some things. So, uh, Sister Tammy, uh, what, what's the number one on our list? Um, before I do mention the number one thing um, of what hidden abuse looks like, October is Domestic Violence Month, and this is an awareness month for those that um, um, promote domestic violence, um, help and seek out um, those men and women who are in domestic situations. So this is a time that information is going out and um, it's to empower those men and women who are victims of abuse to be able to speak up and speak out and hopefully get out of their situations um, alive. Um, but hidden abuse is usually something that, like it says, it's hidden. Not a lot of people may know about it going on in your life. Um, if you have some of the things that we're going to talk about tonight, these are things that are really um, are well hidden among people. And, um, you know, we're wanting this to be a safe place to where you can open up and share. Um, and, you know, we can point you in the right direction if you do need help. 
Um, but when hidden abuse takes place, usually what it creates is a sense of insecurity with that person. So they're not going to feel empowered to be able to get out. And, um, you know, with these things that we're going to talk about tonight, um, there's, n there's no shame, for one. Um, you know, there's no shame in reaching out for help. And so um, the first thing that I want to bring out tonight is micromanaging. And so this is like a sense of control that one person puts over another person to where they try to manage every aspect of their life, whether it be um, what they wear, um, how they fix their hair, um, places that they can go and they're told they can't go. Um, but it's controlling even down to what you're going to order in a restaurant to eat. We've uh, seen this before um, in our local town. This um, gentleman, I, I assume they were married, but he said, she's not going to be eating chips and salsa tonight. And I kind of looked over and I was like, what? I'm like, if that woman wants chips and salsa, give her chips and salsa, you know. But it was just, it was like, you know, you really don't think about those small little things. But, you know, he told the waiter that, no, she's not going to be having chips and salsa tonight. And even the waiter was kind of taken back by that because, like, he, you could tell he was in an awkward situation because he really didn't know what to say to that. And one thing that I would like to add to that, too, um, with micromanaging, they also, they like to set a standard um, to, like they say, well, if, if you do this, then I'll be happy. Well, once you get to that level, then what they do is they raise the standard again, and they micromanage you that way, so you're always chasing, like, another standard to keep you wore out, to keep you thinking that you're not good enough, and, and once you reach that level, or what you, once you reach whatever standard that is, then you'll be accepted, and it it's kind of like, you know, making a dog chase its tail, it's like, you know, you just keep going round, 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 it like you, you'll never catch it, and that's how they keep you wore out and beat down, and uh, yeah, micromanaged. Um, we want to say hey to Sue and Crystal and George. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Sister Sue says, yeah, it's like uh, walking on eggshells. You're trying to find a balance, but it seems like you're na never able to achieve that balance or that goal. Um, it seems like you're always being knocked back down when uh, someone is trying to control every little aspect of your life. And the second one here is they jokingly hurt you. Um, and, you know, we we picked this topic because it's stuff that both Mickey and I have heard before. And, you know, if you're out in public, sometimes um, what you see out in public, you can only imagine what goes on behind closed doors at home. Um, but I've heard men jokingly hurt women by telling them they're fat oh no you're not that fat or you know it's like they joke about your looks or they I've heard even men say oh she's just dumb she don't know what she's talking about or you know it's like it's like giving those hurtful little jabs and then turn around and say oh I didn't mean that and let me say this too um I'm sure my brother George will back me up on this too, but God takes the way you treat your wife or even soon-to-be wife, girlfriend, very seriously because, you know, your wife is a gift to you. And I believe it's in, uh, it's either in First Peter or Second Peter. He addresses the men. He says, consider your, your wives the weaker vessel, lest your prayers be hindered. So if you don't want your prayers to be hindered, you better be treasuring the gift that God gave you as your helpmate. Because if you put her down, you're pretty much trying to slap God in the face. And, you know, you treat her bad, 
Your prayers ain't getting no further than right here. No matter how much you yell, beg, plead, scream, <laughs> you know, you gotta learn to treat her right. Treat her right. That's right. She's the one who cooks your meals. Um, and another one is you're saying they say the truth, but it's in a harsh tone. And, you know, we know that you get a whole lot further with honey than you do vinegar. And, uh, <laughs> or, or in Spaniard, we'd say toupee. <laughs> what that means. Two. Oh, <laughs> but, um, you get farther with honey than you do toupee. Okay. Okay. I was like, what? <laughs> I'm a little slow sometimes, but yeah. <laughs> um, you know, it, the Bible says to give the truth in love. Um, you know, there are times that, yes, we do need constructive criticism, but then there's other times that people can just be downright hurtful with the truth. And, um, you know, instead of trying to help or to lift up, they just continue to beat down people verbally and... Uh, Along with that too, it's like knowing when to do it, because um, doing it in a crowd or, or in front of a bunch of people, sometimes even though you could be doing it in love, you could be doing it at the wrong place, and um, so yeah, you have to kind of know the right time, the right tone, and you know, the right word. And, you know, in a marriage, that goes both ways because there are times where, um, as one of our youth kids will say, I'll leave y'all alone to y'all and talk marriage stuff, <laughs> whatever that means in their mind. But, you know, it's like, you know, sometimes you just have to talk marriage stuff. And, you know, it's it's both for the husband and the wife. And, I think that you should have an open communication between a husband and a wife because it allows you to get out what you're feeling. It allows you to talk about those things that you're maybe having a rough patch with, but you just need someone to talk through it with you. And, and two, it takes away the chance of the enemy trying to place a foothold between you and your spouse. Right, and so it's um, always the best to talk things out, to be truthful, but to do it in love and respect one another. It's like, be a good listener in your marriage, in your relationships. Um, don't be the one that's always talking and cutting off and not allowing that other person to express themselves because, you know, we each should be respected in that way. And um, so it's, you know, allow ample opportunity for your spouse to speak um, to, to you. I don't know if we got cut off there. Yeah, we don't know if we have spotty service, but uh, we're going to continue on. Um, if you can still hear us and all that, you can give us like a thumbs up or something. Um, but the next one is... Um, they put down your family. They put down your loved ones. This one goes along with them wanting to try to get you isolated and get you away from your friends and from your family. They try to put seeds of doubt in your mind to make you think other people are saying this or doing this to get you to change their change your mind. And it's you know, you've got to, you know, really, you have to take into consideration if your partner, your spouse is doing this, are they telling the truth? Is there evidence? You know, because sometimes the abuser will try to isolate you from any relationship that is going to help you grow. Yeah, because they want you to they want you to depend on them for your source of help, um, for your source of joy, your source of strength. Like they, they want to cut you off from quote unquote the outside world because they want whatever you need to come from them. And that's not healthy on, on any perspective. 
Exactly, and Sister Sue, she said, you know, women um, can abuse men just the same. And, <clears throat> excuse me, um, there's men that do take a lot of abuse from women, and usually that stems out of jealousy and control because they don't want that guy to go anywhere or do anything or to be around any other females, whether it's work or, you know, just out in public in general. Um, so it's like it's not only abuse that takes place with women. Um, the next thing is putting down something that is important to you. So, um, and this is a big one, um, especially if you're a wife who goes to church and your husband doesn't. They're going to try everywhere in the world to get you to quit church, to quit going, to not go as much. Um, now let me say this too, and I, I'll say this with, with all the love I have in me. <laughs> and like if you're in that situation, if, if you find that you need to vent about anything, about your church, don't do it in front of your spouse. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> find, find somebody that you can trust and, and because anything that you vent like that in front of your spouse, they're, they are going to use against you whenever, you know, whenever they want to discourage you from going. <laughs> yeah, they'll be like, you remember that one time when they hurt your feelings or whatever? Yeah, and it's what a, about when they did this? Yeah. I don't think you <laughs> But, um, yeah, so even if you're involved in hobbies or you do things like with your friends as far as like doing uh, women's trips or, um, you know, you have a sister's weekend or you do a lunch date with a friend, a female friend, <laughs> you know, it's like they try to tell you those things aren't important. And so ultimately what they're doing is they're saying that they're jealous of that time that you're putting into someone else or into a hobby or, um, you know, something that is for you. And uh, they're jealous of that. And that goes on to the next one with they're extremely controlling or jealous. And um, I can relate to this personally because as a child I grew up in this, seeing my stepfather do this to my mom. But he was so controlling, he had his little, I called it his little black book, but he would write down her mileage at home in the morning, and in the evening when she would come back in, he wrote down her end-of-the-day mileage. And he knew the miles it took from home to work and back, and if it was over two or three miles, he was questioning her as to what did she do extra that day and where did she go and who was she with and and I just thought that was always just so crazy you know and I'd even threaten to hide his little black book or I'd I'd he always used a pencil I would erase it or you know I just <laughs> numbers about three miles <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah I was just I did not like that little book and to me that was just the craziest thing ever that you know that someone was that controlling and as a kid I didn't really know what jealousy was so I was like you know and one thing we want to uh, you know the one thing with Tammy's mom she she has always been a peacemaker so she would go along with it just to appease him and, and just to get him to be quiet. But, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's like one of those mindsets. I don't know if she really ever got over, like, you know. I think, well, I think it really did affect her whole um, life. I think she learned to cope um, and learned to deal. She knew what made him mad and how to keep him pe at calm, peaceful, um, you know, and as I got older, of course, I rebelled against that. So that's where my sassy pants came in. And she'd be like, oh, now that's not what he's trying to do. That's not, he's not trying to control me. He's not jealous. And I'm like, then why is he coming and sit in the parking lot? You know, it's like, it's just crazy stuff. And when you grow up around that, you know, when you're seeking for a spouse, 
And the first sign that they're wanting to control you or to change you, it's like red flag. <laughs> you know, it's like it's hitting you in the head, <laughs> you know. It's, it's not a circus. It's not a circus. <laughs> Um, another one is um, they're ignoring you um, when you're trying to say something. This goes along the lines of communication. Like they don't want to really hear what you have to say. They don't think that what you're going to say or have to say is important. Um, or even if you say something that's very important, they always downplay it. Yeah, it's not what you think. It's not as bad as what it looks like. Or they try to always down, they talk down to you. And they make you feel like that what you say is not important. Um, another one is, um, and this one is in quotes, they, quote, accidentally ruin something that is dear to you. Um, they um, will break it. They will throw it away. They will get rid of it. Um, something that they know that you hold really dear to your heart. Um, Let me add this, too, because <clears throat> I feel like the Lord just prompted me with this, and it didn't even come up like as we were discussing it earlier. Or like, say, if you had a pet that uh, you came into the relationship with, and this could go for kids, too, if they're... If they're any way abusive towards your your animals or, or your Lord forbid your kids, you know that's that's another red flag. Yeah, um, you know it's like people who are any way cruel to animals, they um, and they hurt your kids. And see, a lot of this um, can go on. The hidden abuse can go on with a child in the relationship like if um you know because a child is not going to tell if these things have been happening to them um but um we've seen this in action where a step parent would they jokingly hurt the child or um they talk harsh to them and if the child tries to tell then the abuser always tries to downplay it like it, um, you know, oh, it wasn't that bad, or, um, you know, it, I didn't say that. He took it the wrong way. And um, so it's like these are signs to watch for, most definitely, because your kids and your animals are very innocent in um, these situations. Um, one story that I have that I can relate to this um, I let one of my friends, her husband, they had a house dog, and they had had it for a number of years. And um, so one day she come home, and the dog didn't greet her at the door. So she thought maybe it had gotten loose or something. And when the husband came home, she asked, where's the dog? And he said, oh, I gave it away. And it's like, that's the family pet, <laughs> you know, it's like, you don't give away the family pet, it's part of the family, and um, so she said, well, he just said that he ran into some person that said they needed a dog, so he just gave him our dog, and I'm like, I would have went back and got my dog, <laughs> Yeah, for sure. I, I would have not cared a bit to go on and knock on his <laughs> door and say, you have my dog. <laughs> But, um, you know, he didn't respect her um, love that he, that, you know, she had for the dog. And the um, that she had with it. Yeah, and just gave it away right out from under her. So, um, and, too, it's like you never know with those kind of situations if there's a story that we haven't heard why he gave away the dog. Because that, that's just something that, you know, mentally sane people just don't do out of the blue. Right. Without, you know, there's just something that we probably don't know. Well, I in times that I had talked with her, you know, he was definitely controlling and jealous. And when uh, Facebook came out, um, you know, that's another topic in itself. A lot of people have, um, when Facebook came out, have ended up joining their Facebooks as husband and wife because there were trust issues that took place and 
Um, I remember when it first came out, he refused her to have any male friends, and you know, it's um, he would check her phone and wonder why she was getting up in the middle of the night to go to the bathroom. And so, I mean, that's extreme. And, you know, she was telling me this stuff, and she and I had had long talks. But, you know, it's like you have to make that decision um, if you're going to stand and not be in that anymore, and that's a really hard decision to make. But there are help resources available um, because a lot of people feel like that there's nowhere to go, that uh, they feel the shame of everybody thinks that our marriage, our relationship is perfect. So if I bail out, what's it going to look like? Um, and these are things that the enemy tells you. And the shame, you know, of just having to admit that there's a problem, um, that's a big one too. Yeah. And um, But there is help available um, And a lot of the women that do get out of domestic situations, it's not always permanent. They end up going back because all the apologies, all the I'm sorry's, oh, it won't happen again, I'll change, I'm different now, all those false promises, it creates a cycle of abuse. And um, so it's our goal to be able to empower Um, the listener of this podcast to know that you are worthy, that there is a plan and a purpose that God has for your life. And um, just because things have been this way, your whole relationship or your whole life, you know, you still have the power and the ability to break that cycle in your life. Always remember this, that just because it's your spouse, you know, male or female, just because they don't know your worth, rest assured that God knows your worth. And sometimes it's like we have to refer back to God's word to realize like what he thinks about us because, you know, one thing that I had to work on and am still working on is like how God feels about, about me and like, you know, you guys out there. Could, could benefit from learning about how God feels about you because once you get secure in that then we all benefit from learning how to draw that strength from him because if we draw it from him then we can help our spouse um, I always say all the time that you know with me and Tammy it's like the Jesus inside of her healed a bunch of my iniquities and failures and faults and, and and things like that and vice versa the Jesus in me helped heal like a lot of her past um, past sins mistakes whatever you want to call it and but neither one of us could have healed each other in Jesus if we didn't know Jesus for ourselves right so we want to encourage you to get in the word and make time for him spend time with him don't just you know if you go to church don't let it just be like a Sunday morning whatever midweek service you know spend that personal time with him because he's a personal Jesus and um, that's going to be the only way that you get the strength to help you get through the issues like we're talking about tonight amen Uh, Yeah, Brother George, um, it seemed like it was freezing up tonight at certain points, the video, so I hope you guys didn't miss any of the content, but um, yeah. (laughs) Technological demons, (laughs) we cast them out, boogity boogity. (laughs) Oh, is that boogity boogity? (laughs) Oh, goodness. But, yeah, I think uh, we're getting ready to wrap it up for the night and um, share this podcast um, with your friends, with your family that you feel like may need it or just want to give them an encouraging word for the week. Um, But we appreciate each and every one of you for 
tuning in, not only here on Facebook in the group, but also on Podbean. And as always, thank you for the replay listeners. You guys are as important as well. And um, we just uh, appreciate you guys so much and love you all. And we pray that you will have a blessed and a prosperous, favored week.